In the movie Moneyball, Billy Bean and the Oakland A's think differently than the rest of Major League Baseball. They have a totally different approach. We're going to have some fun today unpacking what that meant for them and how it relates to our own lives. How do we think differently? Let's unpack it. Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack parallels, metaphors, and topics in sports that relate to life and faith. Today is a special episode as we continue our summer movie series, as we take a look at sports movies and the parallels that are there for our own lives as we follow Jesus. I'm Bryce Johnson here in Charlotte, North Carolina, joined today in studio by guest co-host, a good friend of mine, a pastor in the Charlotte area, Mike Atkins. We'll do official uh, bio here in just a little bit, but we'll we'll be excited to uh, to talk to him today. And uh, we got a great topic, great movie, awesome story. Uh, last week or yeah, last week we talked about the Sandlot, which is mainly a make believe story, you know, based on the reality of our, our childhood, but uh, today's movie based on a true story. So there's a lot of sports uh, you know, parallels there and, and things to unpack. So uh, we'll, we'll have some fun there. Uh, encourage everybody to uh, check out our website, unpackingit.com. Also, this time of year, we are gearing up for fantasy football. I've been talking to people, getting lunch with different people. Hey, where, where do you stand on mock drafts? How much research? People are just easing in. Guys, you're behind that. I've been mocking for at least a month now. Come on, step it up. But no, we're gearing up for fantasy football. That means we're gearing up for fantasy football fellowship and another season for you to play fantasy with purpose. And so we want to give you this content, give you our tools, our resources. It's all free, but but you do have to become a member. So free membership on fantasyfootballfellowship.com. And we will take you through the entire season with weekly breakouts as we take fantasy concepts related to life and faith. And so it's designed for any fantasy league and you can bring it to your church, your neighborhood at work, start a league, bring it to a current league. Uh, just, we just want you to utilize the content. And so check it out. Fantasy football fellowship.com. Also want to thank our sponsor upward sports. Be sure to check out upward.org slash unpack and start a sports ministry at your church. Upward Sports desires to come alongside of your church to advance your mission and promote Jesus by using sports as your ministry tool. And so imagine families coming to your church, field, local school, parking lot with their child each week to play in your league. So you run the league, but Upward comes alongside of you. And so this is where connections are made. And so by partnering with Upward Sports, your church uh, will customize your unique you know, player package and choose which sports you want to offer. And, and so upward.org slash unpack uh, to, to find out more information and give them a call today and tell them that unpacking it sent you. All right. He's Mike Atkins. He's here in studio. He's the campus pastor of Forest Hill Waxaw. I spent nine years at Forest Hill and so love that church. They've been a longtime partner with us uh, here at unpacking it. And, and so uh, my brother goes to, to Mike's church as well. And, and Mike studied at Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary. Uh, he studied psychology at App State, so he's a fellow Mountaineer. I'm wearing my, my App State shirt today. I'm actually having lunch with a guy from App State uh, as well. Mike is a Dolphins fan and a Braves fan. Mike, great to have you here. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much. That was epic. <laughs> like, watching you in your element incredible but i'm so excited to be here man man well no i'm i'm psyched to have you and so when i threw out sports movies to you you said hey moneyball is my favorite sports no 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 favorite movie what's favorite up with movie. that How, tell me why man it, it's it's a combination for me of all of my loves right so like uh mathematics statistics i'm a real nerd when it comes to that stuff uh baseball baseball is my outside of jesus and my wife and my son, <laughs> baseball is my next love. Uh, baseball and people, I should say, but baseball, man, that's where it's at. So this movie, Sandlot, runner up for sure, but Moneyball, just so epic. So here's my take on this movie. So I watched it over the last week. I watched it a little bit at a time. 
Uh, and regrettably, I watched the like edited down version on TV and they cut out scenes. Ugh. Now it saved me a little bit of time, but it was like, wait, they cut stuff out. So, but anyway, but I got, I reminded myself, I've seen it years ago, but here's what I love about sports movies. It, and this is why I also love sports documentaries. I want to know the behind the scenes. Yeah. Now the sports movies that capture what we already witnessed on the field, eh, it's okay, right? Those movies are, they're, they're fine, but it's like, I kind of saw this eh. I want to know what was going on behind the scenes. And also, that's why I love the movie Draft Day. As silly as Draft Day is, it still like takes you into, wait, this is kind of how it goes. You can kind of see what's going on with the general manager. And so similarly, Moneyball falls into that. They, I put that in the Draft Day kind of movie category. Uh, so I, I love that too because I love fantasy football. I love the, the, the managing of rosters. I told someone the other day, I used to play Madden, the video game. Oh, yeah. I didn't play the actual gameplay. I traded and did free agency. Same. Is that what you did? Same. <laughs> Franchise mode, man. You do all of the owner stuff. Yes. All the GM work. Yeah. So so that's why I love Moneyball as well. Because you're you're it's I because I my my wife doesn't love sports like I do. So I was like, I don't think you'd like to watch Moneyball because it really is, you know, the phrase inside baseball. It's truly inside baseball. Absolutely. But the way they capture it, and of course, Brad Pitt does an awesome job, Jonah Hill, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Chris Pratt, one of his early, early roles. Yep. The acting, Aaron Sorkin is the, I guess, the director or writer yeah. behind it. It's a legit movie. It's yeah. the real deal. Some of my favorite actors, everything in one place about baseball. Fantastic. Y you can't beat it. And yeah. and so when when you look back though, the you know, the the sports story, we I don't necessarily remember it or I can't place it exactly because now you've I've watched the movie, but you, you look at the sports reality, the truth of, okay, this is based on a true story, what actually took place during that 2002 season, but that's a real 20-game winning streak, right? which is remarkable. And I started thinking about it. I go, okay, how hard it is to win that many games in sports, but especially baseball. Your your baseball guy. Yeah. Why is that 20 wins in a row so impressive? I think it's, you know, the grind day in and day out of, hey, I've got to be hot the entire time. I can't take an at bat off. Um, you know, sometimes you you start thinking in terms of outs, and it's like, oh, we've only got six outs to score this many runs. You try to do these trade-offs, and it's like it becomes kind of kind of impossible because in your head it's insurmountable. You get up to the plate, you're trying to score three runs, there's nobody on base, right? Like, how do you do that day in and day out? And over a 20 year, a 20 game period, each one of your starters in a five man rotation has probably gone four times each. So not only does your offense have to be on, your pitching has to be on. Uh, and what is it? The last three games were all walk offs, which, yes, which it's, is remarkable. It's, it's crazy. It is crazy to think of. Because it felt like in the movie when they finally got number 20. I mean, that was a dramatic game. Oh, yeah. It felt like, oh, that's a little Disney-fied. Yeah. No, that was the that was what really happened. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. And what's so cool, too, you know, I just love this movie so much. They nailed it with the soundtrack. Mm. Like, the guitar mm. the entire way through. I, I hear the cymbal swell and that chord when Ske when Hatterberg hits that home run. Uh, and it's like, he's the guy, too. He's the underdog of the underdogs. That's right. Because he couldn't throw the ball. But here he is, pinch it and hit this home run, set this record, Which immortalized. Is a, another big deal, a pinch hit. Yeah. You know, that, that, that was the, the walk-off. So, so good. Yeah, the, the layers of it are are great. And you know, how, just, how can you not be romantic about baseball? That was the good line. Right. Good. It's like my favorite line. I, I say it all the time. How can you not be romantic about baseball? It, it, it's true. And admittedly, baseball is not my favorite sport, but there is this yeah romantic part of it that, that you go to the ballpark. Baseball movies are the best. Yeah. The yeah, just the history the numbers and so that's you know especially with the we talk about the a's we'll, we'll go more into this you know that's what makes you know baseball special and unique and, uh, yeah and, i had a friend that used to say too like baseball is the one that you go to expecting to get a souvenir yes and it's like no other sport does that for you you know a hockey puck comes in like it comes in hot like oh, you're in yeah. trouble <laughs> yeah <laughs> but a baseball you can catch one like you can get one from a player there's just something really magical about about baseball my three-year-old is experiencing this for the first time right now 
and all he wants to do is play baseball. All he wants to do is think about baseball. He wants to see Homer, uh, the the <laughs> Knights Dragon like mascot, our, our local minor league team. Yeah, he wants to see him every time. So yeah, it's just there's something magical, man. Absolutely. I think I caught one ball, and you know I caught it off the funnel cake roof. <laughs> it bounced. I think it was like a metal roof. It bounced off the roof, and I caught it. Powder sugar went everywhere. That's right. I'm down there just getting the, getting the funnel cake. It's all about the funnel cake. <laughs> but I left with a ball. I don't remember where that ball went. But uh, but anyway, so the uh, so the movie's great, and and so yeah, highly entertaining. It's intriguing. What's fascinating though, there are elements, especially certain characters that were not portrayed correctly. Now, from a movie standpoint, sure, they added to the the drama. But I, I listened to a video from David Justice. Yeah, he didn't like like necessarily how he was portrayed. And on a side note. You know, you're a Braves fan. I love David Justice yeah. growing up. He was one of my favorite players. Yeah. He also played for Cleveland. I, I was an Indians fan back in the day, too. So I love David Justice. And that was his final season. I think it was final season with the a, with in the major leagues with the, the A's. And he went there. Hey, I'm going to be a leader. He embraced that. But in the movie, they made it seem like he didn't want to be. And Billy Bean had to convince him right. to, to be that. I think Billy Bean was slightly portrayed differently. And Brad Pitt almost was nicer. Then Billy Bean really Which is, is hilarious because he's he's a jerk in the movie. <laughs> which, which yeah, so that was interesting. And then uh and then Philip Seymour Hoffman played Art Howe yeah. a little bit meaner. And he actually wasn't against what they were doing, apparently. Right. right. He embraced the sabermetrics and, and the, the the different strategy. Yeah. He didn't embrace the trading of Carlos Pena. Uh and That's fair. so they nailed that one. Um, which I don't think anybody really embraced that outside of Billy Bean. Um, he was an all-star. Yeah, he's an all-star. Uh, At the all-star break, a rookie as an all-star, you don't trade that guy. And there he is. Gosh. <laughs> well, that uh, yeah. So so let let's dive into really the the specific topic that that we'll take away. So there are actually a lot of cool uh, uh, parallels that we could have pulled from this movie, and and maybe we'll do future shows. But today, it's really the overall theme about what the Oakland A's did and, and Brad Pitt, B Billy Bean, Jonah Hill, who was Jonah Hill was a combination of actually two, a couple like different two or three guys. guys. Yeah. And, and D Podesto, uh, I always forget how to say his name. D Podesto who ended up becoming the Browns. Yeah. GM uh, is a part is, is one of those. That was a part people. of this with, yeah. with the A's Paul D Podesto. Yeah. Deep Podesto, yeah, there you go. I'm going with it. You yeah, sound very yeah, yeah. confident. I know. That's, so. that's who ended up being, uh, which he went from baseball to the NFL, which remember people thought that was crazy, but he he's a part of this. Jonah Hill was representing the assistant kind of GM and and bringing you know this emphasis on saber metrics, analytics, stats, numbers, and so that's the theme of this movie is that the A's looked across Major League Baseball and said, all right. We can't compete with the Yankees to buy players mm -hmm. to spend. We, we have a limited budget and the A's ownership, as we know now, because they're, they're leaving to go to Las Vegas. You know, they just didn't fully embrace from a, a financial standpoint, didn't have the, the pockets or willingness to say, hey, spend as much as you want, like the Yankees do and the Dodgers, of course. So they said, all right, we got to think differently. We got to have a different approach. And they leaned in before anyone was truly willing to, to say, hey, we're going to go get guys that have a great on-base percentage. And so in the movie, you know, you see them, all the scouts say, hey, well, what about this guy? And, you know, different characteristics of, of what you would normally scout with a player, mm -hmm. how they look, how they, you know. Who's Fabio? That's right. That was, yeah. That's a good line. Too. That's a good line. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, Billy Beans, like, no, we're looking at numbers. We're looking at numbers, mm -hmm. and and that's the, that's the way they're doing it. And so, you know, there were plenty of people that thought, okay, uh, this, this can't work. There's, right. there's no way this can work. And, and then there's also, you know, you, you look across the league, it's like, well, everybody else is doing this. This is the way baseball has always gone. As far as typical scouting, the way you add players, sign players, keep players, trade players had been done, you know, pretty standard across the, across the board. And the A's are going, nah, we're going to do a different approach. Yeah. And to get the buy-in, well, ultimately from the ownership to say, yeah, go for it. Uh, and then you have to get the scouting department on board. Yeah. And you have to get the manager on board. You have to get the players on board. You got to purge the scouting department. Like you, you got to let go of the guy that's tried to do it the whole way that's still kicking against where you're heading, you know? That's uh, right. You talk about thinking differently 
firing somebody with that much experience is a huge move. Right? Well, and I looked that up too. So in the movie, the head scout, let me see what his name was. Uh, he was fired because he was pushing against it. Mm -hmm. In real life, he apparently chose to leave. He wasn't forced out. So there's a little bit of gray area. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But in the movie, there was a, a pretty intense exchange. And Billy Bean's like, all right, you're out. And then this is probably ridiculous. But he goes into the video room. He's like, hey, did you play baseball? And he just picks some random uh, guy. Little League. And yeah. he's like, head scout. Head scout now. <laughs> I doubt that was the truth. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, when we look back at, okay, what the A's accomplished in 2002, and then from a bigger standpoint as well, but in the movie it focuses on that season, they did not win the World Series. So this isn't like a lot of sports movies where – yeah, you win the championship, the Super Bowl, whatever it is, the gold medal, that's that's what it's about. This wasn't that wasn't the standard. That wasn't necessarily what they had to do to prove that hey, this approach works. Our willingness to think differently works. And to what we talked about earlier, 20 games in a row yeah. is a big deal and at that time was was definitely the American League record and uh since then, it, it, I think 22 wins has has been accomplished by the Guardians. But, yeah. Um, but that was that was huge for them, and and in some ways, of course, Billy Bean wanted to win the World Series, but to make the big change, to make the switch, to think differently, it worked. They did it with a small budget, and then the Boston Red Sox, Red Sox, uh, <laughs> that was Boston. that was like a slip. Um, the Red Sox, uh, they realized, hey, this is let's let's do this. They wanted Billy Bean, they didn't they didn't get him. But two years later, they end up winning the, yeah. the World Series and went on to win four World Series, right? Using essentially the same approach, yeah. as the A's, and so it did work. And then the Cubs from there, yep. Um, so it's it's a fascinating sports story, and and I always love in sports when coaches, managers, ownership to say, hey, we don't have to do it the same way. Right. We can do things differently. We can approach this differently. Yeah. And adapt and, or die. That's what he says in the movie. It's like if you don't have the means to do it the same way, then it forces you to think differently. I think in my life. Yeah, I don't have the means to try and live a life successfully the way that everybody else does. Mm. Uh, whether that's physical means or financial means or fill in the blank. Um, my wife thinks I'm handsome, but I don't have the looks to be <laughs> wildly successful. You know, if that's the case, I'm I'm essentially trying to use this like credit card on life to try and keep up with everybody else instead of thinking mm. thinking wildly different. Mm. Um yeah, so I dove into the deep end right away. Yeah, I like, like that. Yeah, I mean, to think differently in terms of sabermetrics is is a beautiful thing because you can look at it and see something. When we try to think differently in our lives, it takes a lot of faith mm. to to expect a different outcome, mm. right? Than what than what we could normally expect and measure based off of what we've done before, or what we've seen before, right? Mm. And I love just the fact that, okay, the A's evaluated, okay, we're only going so far with sort of doing it like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we need to do things differently. And so throughout the movie, here are some of the key lines. Billy Bean, we're going to rethink baseball. We've got to rethink this game. I'm asking you guys to look at this game differently than you've ever looked at it before. What if we've been wrong this whole time about what ingredients manufacture a win and then uh peter brand uh jonah hill's character says baseball thinking is medieval mm -hmm. and so here's what we want to get into today in what ways in our own lives do we need to think differently and change our approach as we evaluate where we're at as we evaluate the way we've previously thought the way we've approached life previously my mom always says, is it working for you? <laughs> I think I may be a uh, Phil, uh, Dr. Phil line too. Is it working for you? Yeah. Um, and so we have to, okay, okay, yeah, what am I doing? Is it working? Is this, is this best? And then as we surrender our lives to Jesus and say, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus, are we understanding what that means when it comes to, okay, now our thoughts are different. The way we think is different. 
And do we do we fully embrace that as followers of Jesus, our approach is going to look a lot different than the rest of the league, so to speak, than the rest of the world? That our approach to marriage, parenthood, money, jobs is now through a different lens. Yeah. No, it's not sabermetrics. It's a it's a biblical lens to say, okay, God is the creator. God is my Lord. God, Jesus is my Savior, and His Word is how I'm going to view making decisions, how I'm going to think about day to day life, and 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 the decisions that that we make. Mm. And and so let let's let, let's jump right into some scripture, and then and, and Mike, you can you can unpack some of this. But you know, we joked before the show. You know, Romans 12, the, the whole chapter is one of the most important chapters in the Bible just because it's it's such a foundational chapter of, of scripture. But but here's what it says in verse two. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so as followers of Jesus, we want to do God's will. We want to live with with his purpose at the forefront of our minds. So what's that going to what does that mean? We have to renew our minds. We have to think differently. And and so Mike, I'll let you jump in. Man, I love it. Uh yeah. If if we truly want to know the blueprint of moving forward, if we really want to truly know what God has in store, this passage literally spells it out for us. And yes, there the, the Christian walk doesn't necessarily have saber metrics, but there is fruit that is born from it. And and Christ gives us all of these wonderful ways in which we are going to experience new life in a new way of doing things. Um John 3:30, John the Baptist says, I must decrease so that he can increase. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, the Christian life, if we look at it the same way, if we don't change the way that we think, essentially it looks like losing. Like the Christian walk with Christ looks like we're losing. If you think about it in the old Testament, you've got Gideon, uh, this, the story of Gideon is a judge of Israel. And this battle plan that God gives him is to hold these pots with like light in them and crash them at the same time instead of going into battle with weapons, right? Uh, same is true with Joshua. Joshua is called to take Jericho, and what's the battle plan? March around the city for seven <laughs> days. You know, uh, now you're going to be tired going into battle. But God is saying, no, no, no. The victory is mine. But when we look at it, we look at it as if we're losing something. Uh, and Jesus, I mean, the perfect example of this. It doesn't look like winning when you're hanging on a cross, mm. right? And so there's this idea I think that we have that's like, you know, I have to win, I have to prove myself, I have to be the forefront or the main character of the story. And what I love so much about Moneyball and sports movies is the, the focus on team, right? Mm. The focus on doing what the coach says, because when all things align, that's when you start to win. Mm. That's where you start to see victory. And, and what I mean by the saber metrics is like, if you look at Galatians five and you have the fruits of the spirit, to me, that's the OPS, the batting average, the war, you know, like it's all of those stats that says, is my life defined in a way that is abiding in Christ is like being with him, not just saying that I believe, but having a real life relationship with him. And then the fruit that's bearing from that through the Holy spirit, does my life reflect am i experiencing and exercising outward love or joy or peace or patience kindness goodness faith like all of them are am i seeing those at work because in the movie like you start to see the runs pile up you mm. start to see the wins pile mm. up because they're thinking differently and moving accordingly if i say i'm going to think differently and don't change my actions mm. or i act differently but don't change my approach I have essentially just negated any and everything that I'm trying to do when in fact living a life in Christ is completely dying to myself and allowing his life and his victory to be the thing that, that runs everything. So Amen. yeah, it's going to look like losing. It's going to look like losing because I'm dying to myself and that's hard. 
I'm, I'm not saying it's simple, but it is clear. And when it is, man, fruit bears. I want my family and my workplace, our conversation. I want all of that to show love, joy, peace, pay. Like I want those things, but I'm going to go back to, yeah, but I can only get that by buying the right thing or having the right house or looking a certain way. Like it, it doesn't compute that way. And what's, what's the old adage, you know, doing it, um, doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result, right? Uh, change the approach. Insanity. Change the approach. You got to change it. That's, yeah. that's it. Oh, I love it. Amen. And it, that's tremendous. And yeah, I mean, you think back to what Billy Bean did and what the A's did, they got rid of certain players. They traded away players and it looked like, wait, are you guys trying to lose here? And they did. They lost a little bit initially. Mm -hmm. And then to your point, then the wins started to, to pile on and if you put together a 20, 20 game winning streak and, and over a so, hundred wins in the season. That's right. Yeah. Go to the championship game, right? Championship series. Exactly. How far in the playoffs? Divisional but, series championship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, yeah, for us, it, the, the rest of the league, the people around us might think we're crazy for, wait, you're doing that? Like, and so those decisions in our lives, other people may question it. And we have to, if, if we know that this is the direction that is God's best, that these are the changes that, that he's asking us to make according to scripture, then we stick with them and we trust him for the fruit. And, and I, I was even wrestling with this today a little bit. I'm thinking, all right, Lord, I'm, I'm trusting you in my, in my life. I've been, I've been putting the work in. I've been, you know, doing certain things. I'm trusting you. I, I can't, the results I have to, to let go of the fruit. I have to let go of because only you can step in and do those things. But am I being obedient? Am I being faithful? And, and again, back to, to, to Moneyball and, and back to what the, the A's did, you know, they, they stuck to their convictions. Mm -hmm. They stuck to, hey, we believe that this is what is best for our team. And so if we, if we say, yes, I want to follow Jesus, I want to live in, in a way that, that honors God in his purpose, in his will, that's, what I, that's how I want to live. And sometimes it's, it's not always going to make sense. It's going to be hard. We're going to have to get rid of certain things in our life, certain people in our life. It's like, wait, you're really trading? Uh, who was it? Who'd they trade? The A's? The Carlos All Pena. Carlos yeah. Pena. Are you really going to trade Carlos Pena? Well, yeah, this is what's best. This, is, this has to happen. And so th that means there's sacrifice in life. That means, you know, to your point, dying to ourselves every day, our selfish desires, our way of doing thing, our things, our former way of thinking. Mm -hmm. We have to renew our mind. It's yeah. a total different approach. And what, what's really helpful in Romans 12, 1 and 2 is what does it say about renewing, right? Do we have to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps to think differently? Mm. No, it's essentially saying submit to Christ. And as you do... <sighs> You know, I'm not trying to berate anybody because I fall into this as well. But if you say you believe in Jesus and you say that you're a believer or a Christian and you have no relationship with Jesus through prayer or through reading the scriptures or through gathering together in community to worship, like what are we essentially saying? That's like saying I'm married, but I never see my wife. I never talk to my wife. I never spend time with my wife. Like it, it's an oxymoron, right? Like I can't sit there and say one thing and expect the results of that thing without, without following through. And Romans 12, 1 and 2, don't be conformed to the image of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which means someone else is renewing mm. my mind. That's the Holy Spirit. That's his power. That's his work. And it says, we will know the perfect will of God. Man, I, I, I look at myself in the mirror like daily, and I'm like, don't you want to know the will of God, you crazy person? Like, why are you trying to do it in your own strength all the time? You know, um, and submission and sacrifice, those aren't fun terms to talk about. Um, especially as, you know, just to put on the vulnerability here of being a, a husband and a dad and a pastor at a, at a mega church. Like I want to have the right answers. Mm. I don't want to say, you know what, let me sacrifice this moment to speak, to listen or let me get out of the way so that Christ can really shine here. I don't want to say that. I want to be the hero, mm -hmm. right? I want to be Scott Hatterberg in the bottom of the ninth 
in the 20th game hitting the home run. But I love so much that he's a pinch hitter. It's like, it's like Jesus is in control. And when he tells you to do something or he shows something to you, be obedient. Be obedient. Do the things that you know to do. And Hatterberg looked for a fastball, drills it over the over the wall, right? And I'm just like, that's that's who I want to be. Mm. You know, it's good. It's good. It's encouraging. It's challenging. And and then I guess one one last parallel, and then I, I we got some scripture, and 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 we'll we'll wrap up today's show. But um, you know, thinking back to the A's had a different you know standard, and their their values were different than the rest of the league. Their goals were different than the rest of the league. And and again, as we evaluate our lives, you know, what is leading to our standard? Like, what standard are we living our lives by? And, and what do we truly value? And, and what are our goals for life? And, and are they the same as every other major league team? Uh, again, so it, it, we have to evaluate that because is our standard the life that Jesus lived and calls us to, to live similarly? Or and and living according to to scripture, or is the standard that of the world? And hey, you got to do this financially. You got to move up in your job. You got to do this as as parents. You know, is it is it more important to us that our our kids are superstar athletes, or is it more important to us that they know Jesus? Mm. Our, our our values and standards are different, and so we we have to think differently. We have to approach things differently, and so if our passion truly is for our kids to know Jesus. And it's, it's more important that they're in church on Sunday than on the baseball field on Sunday. And I know that rubs people the wrong way, but that's like, those are the decisions that we have to continually make. And everybody's got, you know, that's between you and the Lord. And everybody's got to make those decisions, but that the, the A's had a standard. They said, all right, our on-base percentage is what we value. Yeah. Does this guy, what's his, on, he would point, Billy Bean would, would point to uh, Jonah Hill. Brad Pitt would point to him. All right. What's his what's his OBS? You you want me to speak? That's right. That's <laughs> when right. I point at you, I want you to speak. <laughs> That's right. So so when you when we have these conversations with our with our spouses or coworkers, whatever. All right. What is, what's my standard? All right. If, am I am I doing what Jesus wants me to do? Exactly. Am I living the way that He wants me to? Exactly. I, I love too the the Red Sox owner at the end of it. Right. He's meeting with Billy Bean, and he says to him, you know, everybody else is going to be a dinosaur if they're not catching on to what you're doing, right? But what he ultimately says that sticks with me so much is the first guy through the wall always gets bloodied. Mm. And I think sometimes we're afraid to take that mm. first step, whether it's, hey, I'm going to pull my kid out of that because uh, we really believe in their in their eternity, or we are going to continue with that, but we're going to put Jesus at the forefront of it. I'm going to put it at the for forefront of my marriage. I'm going to pray before meals for the first time in a long time. Like whatever it is, feels like, running through a wall sometimes, but man, it's worth it. That's right. It's so worth it. That, that, that's true. And, and, and that may mean that we live in a smaller house than we could afford so that we have extra money to be able to give. It may mean that we don't get to watch every, every game because we're going to serve at church or serve in our community, serve in our neighborhood. And we need that extra time. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have to cut out one of our favorite teams or watching every single game. So those are the, those are the kind of decisions where, all right, I got to think differently about this. I got to think differently about my money. It's not just about retirement. It's about what am I, what can, how much can I give? Yeah. How, how can I be a good steward of my, my time and my money and in my relationships? And, um, you know, what are we going to in, invest in? And, and, you know, we're all limited. The, the A's were limited with their budget, but we're all limited in some, in some way, but are we going to maximize what we, what we do have and, and what are we going to value? The A's Absolutely. valued on base percentage. What, what is it for us? Yeah. Yeah. So to uh, live as Christ, to die as gain, right? That's what Paul says. So amen. Amen. Let, let me let me read this too. First Peter 4, 1 and 2. This is the amplified translation. It says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh and died for us, arm yourselves like warriors with the same purpose, being willing to suffer for doing what is right and pleasing God. Because whoever has suffered in the flesh, being like-minded with Christ is done with intentional sin, having stopped pleasing the world so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living for human appetites and desires, but lives for the will and purpose of God. Whew. It's 
powerful. Mm -hmm. So that's first Peter four, one and two amplified. Encourage you to read that yourself and, and let that soak in a little bit. So there's a lot, there's a lot there. So yeah, there is <laughs> um, that's and, any, any, final, any final thoughts, Mike, and, and man, this is an awesome conversation. Yeah. Just to think differently is not, it might feel like an uphill battle, but it is a way forward. And I would rather do something difficult moving forward than fall behind because I'm trying to do the same thing over and over and over. Uh, that's stagnancy and that's death in and of itself. I'd rather willingly give my life to live in Christ. Amen. Amen. There you go. He's Mike Atkins. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for being here in studio. Uh, this was this was awesome. Thanks to Aaron, our producer. Thanks to, to Matt, who also works behind the scenes. I'm Bryce. I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected. And through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well. And I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a great rest of your day. And we will talk to you next week. Another movie edition of the Unpacking It podcast.